Hey everyone, Corey here coming in to do our um, energy update. That's for August the 14th, 2023. So today we have a lot of fire happening. There is a lot of burning desire and energy and um, a lot of reflecting back to us on um, that need to really truly step up and step into we are our own responsibility. Nobody else is responsible for us. Remember that. It is such an important part of who and what we are and how we appear in the world and, and how we show up in our lives. And so, and excuse the fact that we're still in my bedroom, <laughs> moving back to my office tomorrow, um, just rearranging, doing some work and making it fit again, um, kind of outgrowing our home again. It's real weird. I love our home, but we're outgrowing it. Um, and so we're trying to make, make ourselves fit in here. And because we're not ready to go anywhere, love this little space that we're living in. But I do feel that call of, of expansion. So we, the energy has us really feeling that sense of wanting to expand, wanting to explore life, wanting to get out and see things in a, you know, see the world in a bigger way. And so that energy is playing out for us today, following into the week. And so I believe last week's message I put out Thursday. Um, no, I didn't. I put it out earlier in the week, last week, Wednesday or Tuesday or Wednesday, I think. Um, can't really remember, but it is still playing through. So we do have a lot of the energy of last week still impacting us and impeding us. But last week we felt this irritation. And um, I myself, after I recorded it and I left and went camping, literally, I, we were on our first day, we went to, um, Tail Creek, uh, campground and I love it. It is a, it is, um, it is part of the, um, the Métis community. And so, and my husband is Métis and I'm Mi'kmaq First Nations, uh, from Newfoundland and he's, and he is Métis. And, and so we, we went to really check it out we had been to the burial grounds on the top of the area previously and just felt the need to go back to this place and camp and campground was incredible and we, we were down by the river and it was such an amazing experience there was there was a blue heron and eagles and we had an owl at night like so many things were happening for us that were really like really truly a part of the experience that I needed that he needed and a bit of a mini honeymoon but um, I got stung by a, by a wasp and I was just walking. I was just in the water, just put my feet in the water. And I was speaking about like how the, how I could feel this energy in this, in this space we were in and a wasp. I thought it was my ring in between my fingers. And I went to move my fingers and yes, two fingernails have come off in the camping trip three. And so, um, and it, so I went to rub my fingers and it was a wasp and it bit me and it stung but my whole hand became swollen and swole. It was so swollen and the swelling is still there. It's only just starting to go down, but the irritation and the pain and normally a wasp bites me, it's a day or so, but this went on and that was Thursday. This is now Monday and it has been continual. And I'm like, it, it just followed suit to my message and to feeling the irritation and the sting of life. And I'm like, what's that experience teaching me? And how we really truly struggle with being uncomfortable and being uncomfortable in something that is not, you know, that we don't, is foreign to our body. We don't really, it's not something we experience every day. And so a lot of life and a lot of the things that happen to us make us very aware. And through that, this week's energy also brought me into my body pain and, you know, the sting and the pain I got come, got just used to living in with this pain. But when the pain amplifies, it's a whole nother level. And what does pain teach us? And one of the greatest, some of the greatest wisdom I have gotten in the past few years is through walking through the pain story and letting myself feel the pain and, and honoring what my pain needed and speaking to the pain. But this wasp bite was a whole different experience. And I felt myself being irritated. And I'm like, well, I don't feel you know, here I am, you know, out on my honeymoon, I got this, how, how attractive is that? I got this big swollen hand that like all of this little things. And I felt myself being angry on a whole nother level. 
So short to let's just bring that story into the energy. And so that ties into the energy of why we feel these irritations, why life sometimes we get those things in life or those things that really impact us and affect us is for us to really stop and, and question ourselves, question the things that we're just accepting, the comfortable, the comfortable that we create in the uncomfortable, all of those things. And that there is so much more for us to explore, so much more for us to discover. And sometimes we got to get out of our way, not sometimes, all the time. We need to get out of our way. We need to get out of the experience. We have to be willing to see the pain. We have to be willing to see the crappy stuff in life. We have to be willing to see our own behaviors, our own habits, our own ways that we need to really truly allow ourselves to be able to see and to look at that. And sometimes, you know, I, I just had to, you know, I had to accept that this is where I was. This is what was happening. But for days I walked around being pissed off and trying to treat it from like an Advil or something. And then I realized like, why don't I put itch cream on that? Why don't I just go to the pharmacy, leave the campground, go to the pharmacy and get some cream to treat it. And the moment I put the cream on it, things started to change. So maybe if we put a little bit of love a little bit of compassion, a little bit of caring into the areas of what we need to see, what we need to explore, what we need to look at. And it's not all the beautiful things in life. It's not all the pretty things. It's not everything is not beauty. Every, some things have a deeper, some things that are not so pretty, like the thorns on a rose bush, all of those type of things, or a wasp or, you know, a, a beehive or something like that, that you may walk into that may have a purpose for whatever, an experience, but it may cause you discomfort or it may not be something that you really want to walk into, but you already have. So once you walk into it, once you awaken it, once you, once you discover it, once you get this new truth, not to be afraid to don't run from it, but to, to look at it, not to be just angry at it, but to be explore it. What is there deeper for me to under, what is the deeper meaning in all of this and what is there for me to explore and discover about myself and so it is what it is the wasp bit me it is what it is um and in it of course i i did have to go seek and find out more and i'm like persistence one of the one of the spiritual meanings of a wasp and the connection and being you know met by a wasp is about discovering persistence it, there's so many different meanings that went with it and the more that I explored it, the more I start to see myself in relation to a wasp. And, and it was like, mm, okay, or see life in relation to a, a wasp. And that's kind of how my creative mind works. That's how my channel works. That's how channeling this energy works is that everything is teaching me something. Everything has something for me to dive deeper into. And that's where we are in this energy is that it is teaching us to to, to dive deeper, it is time to take a bit of a deep dive. It's time to really look at the things that maybe you have even ran from, which were a part of your gifts or your opportunities for you to explore and grow yourself that you, that you, that you, you're going around looking for a purpose, but yet you're living in your purpose. You're always seeking purpose, but you are the purpose, right? It's like, if you, if you want something and you're like, well, how could, you know, what is waiting for me? What opportunities are there? But what if you are the opportunity? What if the things that you really need are right there with you? Um, and we really want to dive into that this week. So we're going to go with we're going to go with the cards this week uh, for this week's message. And we're going to do the three card spread for this week and see what it has. <laughs> my cards were in, the, in their box. So this is my Everyday Goddess Oracle cards. And these are now available. Um, go to my website and you can purchase your deck of the Everyday Goddess Oracle cards. And I do have a course, I do have an Oracle card certification program that I will be teaching that goes with these cards, but you do have to, you do need the cards to take the course because it will be a deep dive and it's not always pretty, but it's going to be a good journey. It's going to be a great journey to take. Um, and, but you will need the cards to take it. And if you purchase the cards, you will also get the opportunity to have a discount discount code if you have the cards and you'll get the discount code to be able to take the, use the discount towards taking the course. So the course is not announced yet, but it is coming. So it's a little bit of a, a heads up on what's to come. So 
our mind card just hit the floor. So I didn't even get to shuffle very far and this card came flying out. And the mind card is the eye of the, it's the eye of the storm and it is serenity. And so this card really truly speaks of, of the magic in the experience in the moment. And, um, and my word this year, every year I give myself a word and my word this year was actually serenity. And I highly suggest that if it doesn't matter, the year's almost over, it doesn't matter. Choose now, pick a word that, that you will use that will follow you through this year, whether it's peace, serenity, faith, courage, like something that ties into our virtuous self, something that we seek to discover more about ourselves. And so the eye of the storm serenity is we see her and she literally is, she it's the illusion, right? The illusion, the appearance as if she is sitting in the middle of the rainbow, that she is sitting on water, that she's there, the illusions, the imagination. So our eyes can also, our eyes can also trick us. It can fool us. There is a lot of, there's a lot of trickery that happens with our own eyes and the eyes of illusions. Um, seeing the apparitions right into what appears to be. And sometimes what appears to be a not good thing for us is sometimes the greatest things for us. And so what appears to be this, this picture, this image of, you know, being sitting in the rainbow, but she's not in the rainbow and the rainbow is not coming from the water and the, you know, and here's the Pegasus energy and here is the divine. And so the divine energy is not always that of, you know, of an angel or of, of some great things, but of that, which that becomes magic within our lives. So if a horse can teach us many things about ourselves and the horse can be the angel on earth and it can be our Pegasus, the donkey can be a Pegasus. There's just so many things. And so is she able to sit on water? Yeah. Yeah, she is. What if the water that she's sitting on has is low and she's actually on the shore and she's sitting near the shore, but she's also because she's sitting in the water and not on the water. And so how we, how we approach things, how we speak about things, how we see things, truly when we let go of our, our hold on how things are and we release, the, release that, that grip that we have is that we set ourselves free and our serenity and our peace is to be discovered a lot of times and to not be in have such a stronghold to what somebody means or what somebody said or, or what we think we've seen or what we think we experienced or how we experienced or, or who we think we are. And so if we set ourselves free of having to live by such definitions and so defined is that we'll seek the sense of serenity if we get out of our mind. And so this is the mind card. I am pulling a three card spread that I use often, which is mind, body, soul, mind, body, spirit. And so these cards, and so the 17, she is in mother energy. And she's also aware that she has this, you know, she has these magical little creatures. She has a, a ladybug, a butterfly, and a butterfly can be just a butterfly or it can be hope. Ladybug can be just a ladybug or it can be luck. It can be a, it can be synchronicities. It can be signs. It can be, can be signs from heaven. There's so many ways and so many things, but we, you know, we create who we are. We create our characters. We, we create the people in our lives, the people that are in our experiences and our stories. We make them into who and what we want them to be. And we tell ourselves that. And, and we, and so if you want someone to be your enemy, they're going to be your enemy. If you want someone to be your friend, they're going to be your friend. If you want someone to be, you know, your critic, they're going to be a critic, whatever it may be. And so the peace of mind is to set ourselves free of creating all of that and to give ourselves the freedom to observe, to, to experience life from our heart. And a big part of moving forward is to, with this week's energy is to experience from our heart. And my, my mission with the wasp was I was going to go on a mission. I was going to kill every wasp, everything that it was coming from the ground, everything that was coming up from the ground that was bugging me, irritating me, that, that was, that I didn't like. And, and I was getting the bug spray out and I was coming at everything. And then I stopped and I paused and, and my partner says, you know, what if you're in their land? What if you're in their space? 
what if you what if you invaded their territory what if you walked into their nest their home and you are the invasion you're the problem you created the problem and i went oh true such truth and so there's such truth to be discovered moving forward into the body of this week so embody in this and let's move into our body and our body is about the action and movement and this whole transition through the lion's gate energy through all of these shifts that we've had happening we had a massive energy flares meteor showers that were happening they were huge for us this coming week this past week and if you haven't seen them they were magical and they brought a you know big shifts as well and so our nervous system you know really truly getting our nervous system into a state of of calm moving from fight or flight getting out of that energy so here see this card also came flying out of the deck i'm not choosing these cards they're flying out and so i'm leaving this in the video because like i said i don't edit out everything has a purpose so it's annoying you that i'm going up and down i'm getting to the floor to pick up the card so you can actually see and so this was the body card and this is the she is the everyday miracle and this beautiful card and these cut roses and so you know, these roses being thrown, are they being thrown at her? Are they falling at her? Is she being celebrated? Who's celebrating her? Opening up our heart, knowing where we have been. And as I said, with the mind, it's about moving into the heart, awakening that sense of the divine self. The heart has a brain. And this is about action. Miracles happen when we take action, when we put in the effort, when we open our eyes, when we open our hearts, when we open our minds, when we let ourselves be expand to explore to to grow to evolve all of those things and you know we can't see her hands but we see the gold we see the essence and so you know not everything is to be not everything is to be touched or to be moved by us but it's for us to be moved by our experiences is for us to to be moved into having a desire within our heart, a call within our heart and healing that instinctual self so that we can trust our intuition. And I can't teach this enough. I can't facilitate this enough. And it's in everything that I teach in more than existing, which we have the new level one of the light worker certification. It's a healing coaching self-actualization program that makes it all about you first. And level one is all about you not about what you're going to give to everyone else and how you're going to give everyone their opinions, and how you're going to change everyone's lives and how you're going to tell everyone what to do with their lives. But it's about deep diving into you first. If you, you know, you don't give someone your light, you shine your light, you polish it, you turn it up, you turn it on, you make it brighter, you light the flame and ignite this, this heart centered desire within you. And then you inspire others to be their own light not to tell anyone else what to do, but to be their own light. And so, so that they will become their own miracle. That's the essence of the beauty of the divine. They don't force us into action. They inspire us into action. They shine a light up on areas. And so my, what I learned from the wasp and what that journey took was my action to go actually care for what needed to be cared for. Instead of sitting, whining, complaining, and playing victim and being a victim, it was to take action towards my own healing. And that was to treat what needed to be treated. It was the itch. It was the irritation. It was the things that were the bothering me the most. And if I could have sat in it longer, uh, why wouldn't I? That I would be a victim. The wasp be the enemy. And I'd be the victim. And so all of those things and all of those stories, and sometimes we don't realize that was what's aching, what's paining, what's hurting the most, what misery is the choice, right? We choose to continue to stay in instead of walking through, instead of moving forward. And it's sometimes our serenity and our peace isn't by making peace, isn't by recognizing who and what we are in our own stories or what other people are in our stories and making the changes that we need to make. Let's move into spirit be guide guide us to be guided by spirit to be guided by the divine to be guided by something that is the essence of us to awaken the, the true essence the true truth within us and what is it we need to know what is it that is speaking to us today 
Whoa. We got Shelpa, the observer. Okay, every card has hit the floor. And as I was coming up, another card hit the floor. So we're going to leave it out. So Magdalene came after, the observer came first. And this is in Maiden. And so we have a mother card. We have a crone card. And now we have for spirit, a maiden. And we can jump through maiden mother crone energies constantly throughout our lives. We just don't hit that stage in life where we got it all figured out and we're, oh, I'm all there. It's like we can be in our crone ages, but also be in our maiden energy when we're learning. So one of the gray spirits says, let me take you on a journey. Let me take you outside of you. Let me guide you to be able to see, to look in at your life as if you're watching a movie from the outside, a third person view of your own life, of your own words, of your own actions, of your own behaviors. How's that working for you? How's this, how's this continual action behavior working for you? What, are you? what actions do you keep taking towards the things that cause you the most irritation, the things that you keep doing on repeat or the story you keep repeating every time you go to do something and then you repeat it again. How many times have you said to yourself, how many times do you repeat something like, um, you know, th that is, that is that, you know, every time I do this or, um, or you do something that, that, you know, you do something for somebody and then you, then you give yourself the repeat story. How many times do you activate your martyr energy? How many times do you activate your victim? How many times do you trigger that, that, um, that, I'm, I can't even think, channel can't think this way. And so this bringing in this, this energy and just being aware and observe this, these behavioral patterns, this repeat conversation. It's like, who is that really for? Is that for me to really truly listen? Why do I keep doing that? And when do I do that? Who am I around? What am I around? What am I in when I am doing that? When I'm behaving this way? So really, truly looking, and it's a 10. So it is transformation amplified. When you become an observer of your own life, your own experience, an observer of the world, not so quick to engage, not so quick to jump in, not so quick with opinions, not so quick to be hard on yourself. And you start to ask yourself why, not to become a victim of your own circumstances, right? But ask yourself the powerful whys. I asked myself a thousand whys. Why do I believe that? Why am I, why am I, acting, why am I acting this out? Why am I creating this? Why am I doing this? Why do I want this? Who wants this? What version of myself? Am I dancing with my shadows again? Ask yourself those questions. Very powerful and important because the heart, being led by the heart, truly takes us from the free pro from the programming of our brain of, of the thinking of others that have been programmed to us. Um, I seen a great meme this morning, which totally makes sense. It's like, how many times do we see things like uh, government funded, paid, but, you know, paid by the government and we're told that. So, you know, you, you have to be thankful for the government paid for it for you, but who paid for it? Where did it? So it, shouldn't it say sometimes, you know, paid for by the taxpayer's money because who pays for it? Does the people in the government provide the money that pays for what you are receiving? See how we're cre see how that narrative, that story creates fear that you got to be, you know, that you that you better be thanking and appreciative of this somebody who didn't do that, but who did that? Who put that money in there so that you can have that, so that you can have this health care? You did. Who put that in so that you can have the education system? You did, right? Look at it differently. We are responsible for how we see things. And so that we don't start, so that we can move beyond some of the old programming, the old thinking, because observing this on a bigger scale, looking at it on a bigger scale, it's going to open our hearts to really, truly see the value and appreciate us and appreciate the hard work and determination that it does take for us to evolve and to grow. <laughs> and so this is, and so the card that fell out 
so this would be in spirit as well is the Magdalene. So her heart is wide open. She is also in a mother energy. She is blue. Finding our voice, our true voice is sometimes in silence. Being a silent witness, a silent observer of our experiences of life. Sometimes we just, you know, some of the best things that we sometimes have to say is to say nothing at all. And sometimes some of the best things that we can do for ourselves is to not to create a narrative or a story, but to just be present, to just be in our own presence and allow ourselves to just trust. So persistence is what I was talking about with the, with the, um, with the wasp. Serenity is what we're speaking about through making peace of the mind. And then Magdalene, and this is eternal, this also, and the turtle, and what the turtle truly represents is patience, slow and steady. Let, let the universe take us. Let the flow of life take us. We don't need to always be in movement ourselves. We don't need to be running. We need to be still and to stay with ourselves so that we can get into the flow and allow life to flow into our hearts and through us as we take the action of those small things within our lives, like being aware of our words and being aware of our beliefs and being aware of our own behavior as we move forward. And so let's validate this with one last card, Willow, the guardian. And so this beautiful guardian, and she looks so young and so youthful and, but so wise, and she's, she is in full bloom. And so when we look at the guardian and she is a crone energy, but yet she's so youthful, look at her appearance, what brings youth and vitality into us? And a part of that is living every day as if we're just alive. We're just coming to life to be, to step into coming to life, to finally feeling alive and to be not seeking that, that end, but to live in our moments and in our experience and to know that we have this powerful guardian energy with us to not just guard us, but to speak to us in a way that says, where are you going? What are you doing? Why? Why? And so there is a beautiful blossoming energy that says we're ready to bloom. We're ready to grow. We're ready to evolve. But we have to be a part of our own miracles. We have to be a part of the change that we want to see within our lives and within the world and within that, which is all around us. I wish you much love this week. Um, I'm much light and there's a lot of energy. Like I said, we're riding a lot of waves where we're, we got a lot of shit storm energy. We got a lot of ups and downs, but we also have a lot of beauty and awe. Uh, and so become a, an observer of it. Look in like it's a third person and just watch and explore. The world has become noisy and there's a lot of people talking and nobody is listening. And sometimes we just got to be, just got to step away from that and just recognize you're observing, you're, you're absorbing everything. And instead of absorbing start observing. Pay attention to that this week. Much love. I will talk with you soon. Bye-bye.